Thank you. Part of my job is to uh, help webmasters create fast and secure websites. And actually, it's my very first WordCamp, and I'm really excited to be here. So yeah, let's jump in. Um, today, we are going to look at two things. Um, first, I'm going to talk about why website security is important and um, what common misconceptions exist about how and why websites are being attacked. And um, second, I will introduce six best practices that we think um, would help site owners to improve um, website security. And I hope we will still have time for Q&A. Uh, if there's one thing I would like you to take away from this session, then it is this. Make website security priority by adopting the best practices. Um, let's, start, let's start with an easy question. Why is making uh, your site uh, important? In order to answer it, let's look at some of the common misconceptions about how and why websites are being attacked. The first one is this. Security is not a developer's job. And you might think as a developer, I'm interested in delighting users by creating a um, fast and reliable web experience. But what about uh, applications or sites which are not secure and get compromised? Well, essentially, it will uh, hurt your users and their trust. Therefore, as a developer, uh, you should probably be thinking about security as well. The second misconception that we often encounter is how sites are actually being attacked. Site owners believe that their sites are being singled out and actively targeted by hackers, for example, sitting in a basement and guessing passwords. In reality, hackers try to exploit systemic vulnerabilities uh, of CMS platforms, plugins, and third-party applications. Um, for example, outdated or unpatched versions. Um, important here is that it's not necessarily your business or even your site uh, that becomes the target, but just a piece of software that runs on your site. The third one is related to the why sites are being attacked. Business owners think that, hey, if I don't store or process any personal data on my site, then it's very unlikely that my site gets um, targeted. Now think of a site that belongs, for example, to an ice cream store. Um, and it contains only basic information about ingredients or opening times or directions. However, it ranks really well on search because it happens to be the most popular place in town. An attacker might be interested in exploiting this reputation um, of the site uh, by monetizing the traffic to the site. So what can we conclude? Security should be an essential part of uh, a great web experience. Second, a site is not necessarily the main target of an attack. And it's the technical signals, um, rather than the business, uh, that matter. Think of it this way. A burglar walks up and down the street and knocks on every door. Um, and when the door opens, uh, they try to understand what's inside the house. And uh, before they enter the house, they don't even know if stuff that's in the house is valuable or not. Um, in today's world, this work is done by computer programs, and your house might be the site. The site. And if you don't lock, don't lock it, uh, you can see what happens if you don't lock it in this example. I guess some of you heard of this case. Um, it's a US-based company which manages personal data like uh, tax IDs, um, uh, emails, and other personal information for millions of US citizens. And um, ironically, it was hacked. Um, and uh, data of roughly 133 million users was exposed. Why do I show you this example? Well, um, it's even the best make mistakes. Um, but now you might think, well, of course they get hacked. Uh, they manage valuable data. Um, here's an example that we see every day. Uh, the Japanese keyword hack targets sites with good reputation on search. Um, the way it works is that new pages are being created uh, with auto-generated Japanese text in um, randomly generated direct, uh, directories. And these pages are being monetized um, using affiliated links um, to sell fake merchandise and other products in search. And with this type of hack, what you would notice as a site owner um, is that somebody would try to add himself as the, um, some, somebody would try to um, add himself as a property owner in Search Console. And if you see a notification in Search Console, then you, the probability is very high that you have been hacked. 
um, you might wonder wh how how do I get hacked? How do I actually get access to search console other online accounts? For example, through phishing. Uh, if you're not familiar with phishing, what is it? Phishing is a form of social engineering that um, tries to trick users to reveal personal information. Um, let's look at an example. Um, do you notice something odd? I'm not sure if everyone in the room can actually see uh, this slide very well. Sorry? Jackpot, yes, that's it. Uh, one of the things that um, can help you identify a phishing page is actually by checking out the URL and if it matches what you're usually used to. Um, but there are more things that you can actually take into account as a user um, to understand if a site is a phishing site or not. Um, sometimes you would also have uh, low quality images of the, the logos or the brand uh, inside um, a phishing page or you can check out the target um, the target URLs if you hover over links on this page if they actually bring you to uh, another Google site or not um, so in a nutshell a phishing page will pretend to be legitimate uh, and ask you for personal information in general all sites with a login page can be used as a phishing page or can be affected by phishing. Now you might think, who would actually fall for that nowadays? Um, these are the numbers. So the most believable phishing site trick almost half of the users. And actually, um, when hackers strike, they move very fast. Uh, accounts are accessed within 30 minutes after being phished. So it's really difficult to actually um, make up for the vulnerability after um, you have been actually attacked. Mm, so after all, what can you do? What can you do to protect your website better? Um, we talked about how and why websites are being hacked. Now let's look at some of the best practices that we think might help you to uh, build safer websites. Um, we identified six. It's safer login, keep systems up to date, HTTPS, uh, site verification and search console, backups, and training. Um, now, important to note here is that website security should not be treated as a checklist, meaning um, that you just have a, a list of five to ten uh, points that you just check off and assume that your site is secure. Um, but rather like building blocks that change or evolve or even disappear over time. Now, why this is the case? Well, because the technology uh, changes and evolves over time. Passwords are a good example. Um, we will look into that in a minute. And by the way, so the backbone analogy uh, is not intended, but it looks really cool. Um, yeah, let's start with uh, the safe login. Mm, strong passwords are essential to protect online accounts. Um, what you see here is actually the opposite of strong passwords. Um, these are among the top 20 most used passwords. And can you guess from which year? 2017. Um, and does anyone recognize his or her own passwords? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> My favorite one is this one. This is, uh... So um, for developers and site owners, uh, you can find good advice on how to set up and make your authentication process more robust from NIST. NIST stands for the National Institute of Standards and Technology and is the leading organization that sets industry-wide standards on security and authentication. Um, here I would like to highlight two distinct recommendations from NIST. It's password limitations and password resets. Um, you should think about three things when you uh, create a login page and, um, yeah, or user accounts. Um, the first one is you should forbid commonly used passwords, um, for example, that rely on dictionary uh, words or sequential characters like we've seen uh, in the previous slide. Uh, you should also avoid context-specific words. So if you're managing a WordPress site as an admin, you should avoid having WordPress in your password. Um, 
You should also disallow password hints. Uh, usually, password hints are based on um, some um, personal information. But in today's world, with social media, um, you can guess or research many things that people will actually use in, a, in um, knowledge-based um, questions. For example, where, what's your favorite car, or what's the name of your dog, or where uh, your, your birthplace, and so on and so on. Um, and the last point is, yeah, you should limit the number of password attempts um, to um, prevent bots from actually uh, running scripts and breaking, uh, doing a brute force attack. Um, the second, the second uh, recommendation is that password resets are not a must. Um, the, um, um, the industry has discovered that every time you would, for example, force users to reset a password, the password strength would decrease. Why? Because uh, with the increasing number of online accounts, it's really difficult to, attract, to actually create and use unique passwords for each individual account. So users would uh, necessarily tend to use shorter or simpler passwords to just be able to memorize them, memorize them all. But even the best and strongest passwords are useless when they get phished. Um, however, having strong passwords and following the most recent guidelines is actually n not a bad thing. It's, it's better than having a weak password um, or ignoring the most up-to-date advice. And this is where two-step verification comes in. Um, 2SV, or two-step verification, stands for, uh, sorry, um, protects your account with something that you know, a password, and something that you have, a phone, a security key. Has anyone heard or is using two-step verification already? Awesome. Cool. Um, if not, this is kind of a um, short um, description of it. So what 2SV does is it adds a second layer of authentication uh, in addition to the password. And when it's enabled, the user starts the authentication process with the password, but is then um, being asked to perform a second step. Now, how this second step could look like really depends on the preferences of the user. Um, you can use SMS, you can use calls. There is uh, an authenticator app um, provided by us. Uh, security keys, physical security keys, a second device, backup codes that probably uh, most of you know from online banking um, in printed form, or verify devices. Let's look at the security key, for example. Um, it offers the highest level of protection against phishing. The downsides are the cost. Um, but you should think about potential cost of, or the impact of being hacked and cleaning up the hack versus the price of those little things. Um, if you don't want a physical device, oh yeah, by the way, so there's no Wi-Fi needed to use uh, the security keys. They technically uh, work um, like a USB stick. Um, and you can't combine it with uh, mobile devices. Um, and if you don't want a physical device, you can also use a, an app, and an application instead. Um, the Google Authenticator app generates a, six, a random six-digit number, um, and it works without uh, an internet connection. It's easy to set up, and you can combine it with uh, a lot of products and services that are not related to Google at all. Uh, it can be downloaded for free um, in the Play Store. So um, to summarize, two-step verification adds an additional layer of identification and uh, makes the authentication process more secure. It is effective against phishing. The best practice is enable it everywhere. So don't use it only for your Gmail account or um, for, I don't know, for um, Amazon or a Facebook account. If, you, uh, if the platform you're using is offering it, just enable it. Uh, the second building block is um, updating your systems. Technically, um, it seems to be a trivial task, but in practice, it's really hard to do. Um, and I guess uh, um, side owners, business owners, uh, 
know exactly uh, what I mean as developers, I think, as well. So um, what do we mean by systems? It's actually, it's not limited to a CMS, but it's, it's again, it's any type of um, software, plugins, third party applications. Um, why is it so important to keep your systems up to date? Well, outdated software is like an open shoelace. Um, you might be able to walk, but it's just a matter of time until you trip and fall. Um, the, th the second thing is that we will usually tie our shoes before leaving the house. Um, what I mean by that is that as a developer or, or site owner, you should think early on about updates um, in the development process, meaning even before starting to design or develop an application or a site, you should already have um, um, the factor or the variable uh, updates in mind. If you take a shortcut, shortcut here, you can uh, regret it in the future. This is an interesting graphing from uh, Sukuri. I guess most of you will be familiar with uh, Sukuri. Um, you can see that at the point of attack or infection, most of the, the um, CMS systems were out of date. And Sukuri defines out of date um, by saying that the CMS platform was not um, uh, on the latest security version or did not patch the CMS with available security updates uh, when security was actually asked to engage and, and do a cleanup. Uh, it's worth noting though that WordPress did a tremendous job in decreasing this number from 2016. So in uh, 2016 it was around 61% um, and it dropped to 39%. Um, what can you do as a developer or site owner? Well, a lot, but focus on prevention. Cleaning up a hack is more uh, time consuming and, and, and painful than actually um, making your system secure in the first place. Um, you can start by focusing on three things. Monitor website status, check server configuration, and pay attention to guidelines. Um, guidelines, like the one we uh, <coughs> offer um, under those URLs, um, um, you will find a lot, a lot of uh, helpful resources under developers at google.com slash web fundamental security or support at google.com webmasters. Um, this is uh, on the right, you can see an example from the recently published uh, hack guides. Um, yeah, check it out under the URLs. Um, as we discussed earlier, a hacker would uh, look for systemic vulnerabilities. And um, if updates or patches are available, but you don't install them, they're kind of pointless. So the best way to keep up with the most recent um, yeah, updates is to enable automatic, um, uh, to, to, to make them automatic. And um, yeah. It, Tip on a side, avoid applications that do not offer security options. When automatic updates are not available or broken, do it manually. Um, this is an example where uh, WordPress release 4.93 actually had an issue with uh, our updates where the process actually didn't work. Um, and if you are on 4.93 today, please uh, upgrade. Um, to the most recent, recent one. We just sent out a batch of notifications to WordPress webmasters through Search Console um, informing them about this. In summary, all systems should be patched and updated regularly. Uh, the best practice is keep your code clean. Um, if you do it already, fantastic. Um, one of the things that uh, I would like to highlight here is that if you stop using parts of the CMS or plugins or any, type or any other type of application, then remove them completely. Don't leave them uh, on your server. Uh, the next building block is HTTPS. Um, HTTPS is a me mechanism <laughs> that allows the browser app to securely connect to, um, to a website. Uh, HTTPS is the secure or encrypted version of HTTP. Um, if you haven't implemented HTTPS or you need more talking points to convince your clients, um, think about HTTP versus HTTPS this way. HTTP would be like sending a postcard uh, written in pencil and 
information that you share on this postcard could be stolen, modified, um, and of course read. Uh, whereas HTTPS is like a sealed letter. Um, it's hard to access and manipulate information. Um, and if it gets compromised, then it's really hard to, to stay unnoticed or um, to be unnoticed. From the user's perspective, things are going to change as well. For, um, from July 2018, Chrome will mark uh, non HTTPS sites as non secure. And from uh, September 2018, HTTPS will be treated as the default option. So there will be no label whatsoever for HTTPS sites. Um, why should you use uh, HTTPS? Well, encryption, data integrity, and authentication. Um, data that is being um, shared online is encrypted and kept secure from eavesdroppers. Um, data cannot be modified, as I mentioned earlier, um, or um, being injected with adds malicious, malicious, malicious software sorry, um, through the network uh, without being detected. And it actually proves that your users communicate with the intended site. When you think about implementation, um, think about those four things. So first of all, um, uh, ensure uh, robust security certificates. If you are running on a 1024-bit certificate right now, switch to the stronger one, 2048-bit key. Um, use uh, permanent redirects, like the 301 redirect. Um, then help us, help Google, to uh, find your HTTPS pages. So um, don't block them in the robust.txt file. And please do not include uh, no index tags. If you're using a server that allows HTTPS, um, HSTS, um, which stands for um, strict transport security, um, which means that if, for example, um, a user types in the HTTP uh, URL into a browser, um, the site will still come up uh, in the HTTPS version. Or if you would look on Google search for the HTTP version, we would still serve the HTTPS, HTTPS one. So enable it on your server. If your don't server offer this, uh, if, you, if your server doesn't offer this, then maybe look for a new one. Um, HTTPS also enables new technologies like geolocation. Uh, it, it's, also, um, it's also improved performance. And you might actually see improvement in the search ranking. In summary, enable HTTPS on all sites. The best practice, well, there is just none. Just go for it, do it. Um, um, the next building block is um, site verification in Search Console. Uh, I assume most of you are familiar with Search Console. Yes. Who is not familiar with it? Awesome, cool. Um, Search Console is a free and tool uh, sorry, free and open tool um, that informs site owners about the status of the website. And um, it comes really handy when it comes to security because um, it notifies you and informs you about the health of your site. Um, on the left, you can see the navigation menu of the old Search Console. Um, and on the right, you can see a snapshot of the new UI of the new Search Console. Um, before we get into why Search Console is so important, uh, maybe some numbers. So in, 20, in 2016, um, we discovered 32% of more hacked sites. And there's, there are no indicators that this trend is actually um, going to change. 61% um, of all those webmasters who actually have been hacked could not be reached. But we know that once we actually notify webmaster of a security issue, then 84% of those are successfully clean up the hack. Meaning that communicating with website owners is really important in actually um, um, having an effective method of making the web more secure. And this is what exactly uh, 
Search Console can offer. Mm, under messages, uh, many elections and security issues, um, the webmaster will receive notifications uh, and find relevant information about the site status. Um, what we often see is that site owners that don't have a Search Console account, when they see this message in search, they are simply overwhelmed and uh, they don't know what to do or where to go. Um, site owners with a Search Console account would see this on the other side. So if a message appears in search that the site was hacked, um, this is what they see under the security issue section. Um, we provide information about the type of issue or attack. We provide example URLs. And you also have a detailed description of the problem and how to clean it up, how to fix it. Um, in summary, the Search Console is a free and open tool that provides relevant information about the status of your site. And if you have multiple sites, then you can or should even verify all of those. Uh, that's a short one. Have a backup. It's an important part of actually restoring your site and cleaning up the hack after it has been compromised. Um, it helps to bring you up the original content um, and uh, the original state and the content of the site. Um, it's kind of an insurance that helps you to not to lose users or users' trust. Um, again, it's a short one, um, very straightforward. It helps to restore and recover the content. And um, you should also think about an automated backup instead of a manual one. It saves time. And please be aware that once you restore, once you use a backup, there might be still the vulnerability that was actually the reason for why your site was being compromised. So remove it as well or uh, think about it. Um, the elephant in the room, in a way, train your employees. Um, I know that probably as a developer, this point might not be that relevant, but if you work with clients, uh, SMBs, uh, that have uh, a certain number of employees, then um, it's particularly important to actually be aware what can happen, what can go wrong if employees are not trained uh, or are not aware of website security. Um, foster vigilance. Offer regular and comprehensive trainings and resources. Um, define clear rules and responsibilities for individual employees and, for example, how to install and use uh, third-party software. Uh, develop escalation processes. So if um, an incident occurs, then help your employees to report it and identify it. Um, one of the things that um, we believe is also very effective um, tool is actually educating your employees about browser warnings like like these <coughs> ones. Um, so if while browsing the web, employees or in general users would see those, they should not be alarmed and trust them um, instead of actually continuing the journey. Um, the other thing is uh, improve skills by uh, following simple rules and, and um, principles. For example, as I mentioned, how to report suspicious behavior, um, how to do a backup, um, how to use social media, what to share or not to share, and how to handle sensitive data. Um, in summary, you should encourage your employees to be part of the discussion about uh, website security. Um, what you should avoid is actually scaring them or, or um, yeah, blowing up risks or threats out of proportion. So we started with this question. Let's recap. <coughs> what can you do to better protect your website? Uh, the first thing is uh, use two-step verification to um, make your login safer. The second thing is keep your systems up to date, no matter if it's a CMS, um, uh, plugins, or any third-party applications. Uh, implement HTTPS everywhere, not only the login page, but literally across the entire site. Uh, verify the site and search console in order to be able to receive notifications 
and um, instructions, explanations of when uh, an attack occurs and how you can fix it. Have a backup in place uh, just in case um, things go south and you encounter an attack and need to fix it quickly. And the last one, train your employees. Uh, don't scare them. Help them to be uh, part of the conversation. Uh, they are an essential part of your website security. If you, lear if you want to learn more about it, um, again, these are the three URLs that I would recommend. Um, the first one is particularly for interesting for developers. Second one um, contains all information that we provide to webmasters. And the third one is a platform that is being developed right now that helps you to um, learn and, and um, understand common attacks like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you.